Okay, hello everyone. So we want to continue with uh, vectors in physics. So far in vectors, like I mentioned earlier, we uh, we looked at uh, definition, definition and examples of what of vectors. Okay, under this we also looked at the difference between vectors and what and scalar quantities. Okay, right. Then from there we looked at what components components of a vector okay here we said that the x uh, component is equal to what uh, a uh, cos theta okay given something like this if that is our vector and our angle is there okay and then the y component is equal to what a sine theta then secondly from there we looked at what i mean third we looked at what uh, the magnitude okay magnitude of a vector, so given that the vector A is equal to AX I plus AYJ plus AZK, all right, we said that the magnitude of the vector A is equal to the root of AX squared plus AY squared plus AZ squared. Then number four, we looked at the direction of a vector, right? Direction of a vector, here we said that if that is our vector, then we say that um, uh, theta, which is our direction, is equal to tan inverse, tan inverse, ay, ax, okay, ay, ax. Then uh, from there, we, we, we looked at addition, addition, and what? Subtain, okay? Addition and subtraction, under addition and subtraction, remember, we had where we involved unit vectors okay unit vectors and we also had the component method okay where we'd have to resolve uh, all, uh, all the all the all the vectors into their components and then find the resultant then uh, today we want to look at which is the sixth part for today which is what uh, uh multiplication multiplication of what vectors okay so this is what we're going to look at today and this is the last part uh, of the lesson or rather of the topic vectors after that we're going to start looking at uh, kinematics okay so now the reason why we even look at this topic vectors as one of the first uh, topics in physics is because uh, remember we said that physics is the study of what physical quantities okay and we said that these physical quantities, they can either be scalar quantities or what? vector quantities, okay? So as long as what you're talking about is a vector quantity, you will always need concepts from this topic, uh, vectors, okay? So it is very, very important when you start looking at kinematics, things to do with velocity, acceleration, and so on, all those will require our knowledge on what? On vectors. When we start looking at... Uh, 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 uh dynamics or other newton's laws forces so all those things are going to require us to have ideas on vectors okay so please please this topic is very very important it is fundamental and the foundation in physics okay so now when you look at multiplication of vectors okay when you multiply them the answer that you get is called the product isn't it the answer you get after multiplying uh, uh two things is called uh the product okay now uh in the case of multiplication of vectors we can either have what is called the scalar product scalar or dot product okay the scalar or dot product now when we said when we use the word scalar it obviously means that there's no direction isn't it there's no direction so what we're going to get is a scalar quantity, okay? When we, when we multiply those two vectors, what we get is going to be a scalar quantity, okay? Then after that, we have uh, what is called what? We have what is called the cross, let me say the vector, or cross what? Product, okay? The scalar or, uh, I mean the vector or cross what? Cross product. Now, for today, in the interest of today's lesson, we are going to concentrate on what? Scalar 
product. Okay, so let's dive into uh, that part of the topic, scalar product, and get to understand uh, what it is. Now, some of you that might have uh, had an opportunity to do additional mathematics in your high school and uh, did the topic vectors, obviously, most likely, you, have, you might have done uh, this topic dot product of vectors, unless otherwise, okay? So now, so what do we, what do, we do? We are looking at what? Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, dot product, or rather uh, scalar product. Okay, we're looking at scalar product. Okay, I hope you're able to see. I think my markers are, are, are starting to film. I will need to possibly get uh, new ones. Okay, so scalar product, okay, the scalar product The scalar product of two vectors A and B. Okay, so let's say we have those two vectors A and B, right? Scalar product of two vectors A and B is the product of their magnitudes of their magnitudes that is magnitude of A and magnitude of what? B, okay? And what? The cosine, the cosine of the angle, of the angle between them, okay? Angle between these two vectors. So let's uh, try to draw a diagram and see what we are talking about, okay? My dear friends, this topic is one of the uh, very interesting topics and very easy topics, so you don't have to uh, even worry about it, okay? So let's say this is vector B and this is vector A, okay? And then we have the angle between them, which is what? Theta. Now here what we say is that the product of these two vectors, okay? The dot product of these two vectors, okay? It is represented as A dot B is equal to the product of their magnitudes, all right? product of their magnitudes, what are the, what are the magnitudes A and B? So we have A multiplied by B and the cosine of what? The angle between them. The angle between them is theta. So we say cos what? Cos theta. Okay, so that is basically the definition and the formula for dot product. Now, we should know that dot product is what? Associative. It doesn't matter which one you start with, whether you start with A or you start with B. It is one and the same thing. So that is A dot B is equal to B dot A. All right. So those are the key concepts that you need to understand at this point as you look at what? Uh, dot product of two vectors. Okay. Dot product of two vectors. Now, let's continue and uh, uh, let's look at uh, parallel and perpendicular uh, vectors so that we are going to be able to apply those concepts as we get deep into this uh, scalar product concept. Okay, now, so we're saying we, we want to look at parallel Perpendicular vectors. Okay. Want to look at that? Now let's look at the x y plane. I mean the y. Plane. So like that, obviously from your high school you've been used to uh, looking at just the x y here, 
we also look at the z axis as well okay so it is in three dimensions like that so where here there is a 90 degrees angle there's a 90 degrees angle there and even there there is a 90 degrees angle so i really hope you get the picture of what i'm talking about okay so it is making a three dimensions kind of uh, kind of arrangement let me see if i have uh, if I have a box that I can use to illustrate this. Okay, possibly I can use something like this. Well, this is this is a, a box of uh, uh, of, of, of tea Okay, so okay, so what I'm trying to to illustrate, uh, I hope you see. Okay, so what I'm trying to illustrate is that we have something like this. So you have the top one, I mean the one going up, okay, the, the, the vertical one is what is called the, 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 the Z axis, okay, and then the other corner is what? X axis and the other one is the Y axis, okay. So that is the kind of arrangement that we have when we're talking about the three dimensions, the X, Y, Z axis, okay. So you have the particular one, the, 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 the vertical one is what? Is the Z axis. The one going the other side is the y axis and the other one is the x axis okay so i really hope you uh, you get uh, what, what i'm trying to talk about now so like then this is the z axis so this is the z axis Oh my god. We have the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X axis like that. Now, remember we also talked about what is what are called um, what are called unit vectors. Okay. Unit vectors, a unit vector is a vector whose magnitude is what? One. Alright. So if we are to draw on this axis, if we are to draw the unit vectors, what would end up with would be something like this. So let's say we have a unit vector along the z axis. Then we also have the z I mean the, the unit vector along the, the y axis. And also have a unit vector along the what? The x axis. Okay? So the unit vector along the z-axis is represented by k. Okay? The unit vector along the y-axis is the unit vector along the x-axis is what? I. Okay? Now, you should understand that their magnitudes are 1. Okay? The magnitude of this, magnitude of that, magnitude of that, they are all 1. Okay? That's what we have. Now, let's look at it like this, all right? We know that, okay, we know that we've, we've already said We have already seen that A dot B is equal to what? The magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of B then cos what? Cos theta, okay? The magnitude of A multiplied by magnitude of B, then cos what? Theta. Now, let's try to consider any two vectors which are perpendicular to each other. So we can see that I and J, they are perpendicular to each other. If we were to draw them independently, we would have something like this. We would have maybe something like that, where this is I and this is what? J. Okay, and then here we have what? Uh, a 90 degrees. Okay, so that's what we have. So if we were to consider these two vectors, let's call this one as vector A, and then this one as vector B. Okay, so A is equal to I, and B is equal to what? J. Then let's try to put that into the formula that we have. So we are saying that our A is I. Okay, our B is what? J. So this is going to be equal to, 
the magnitude of a remember these are unit vectors meaning that their unit i mean their magnitude is what one so this is going to be one multiplied by one then cos the angle between them is what 90 degrees okay the angle between is 90 degrees now what are we to have what we're going to have is this is one one by one is one multiplied by cos 90 what is cos 90 cos 90 is in zero okay cos 90 is in zero so this is going to give us a zero okay this is going to give us a zero so in other words what we're trying to say is that when you are dealing with dot product if you multiply any two different vectors if you multiply let's say i i by j okay as long as they are different you multiply let's say i by k or you multiply j by by k okay what you're going to get is a zero as long as they are different as long as they are different then what you are going to and it is dot product then what you are getting is a zero i want you to get that very very clear very very well as long as what you are multiplying as long as it is they're not the same unit vectors if it's i and j or i and k or uh j and k then they are going the, the answer that you're going to get is what is a zero as we can see from there now remember i said that dot product is associative so it doesn't matter whether you start with i or you start with k and then i or k and then j it doesn't matter okay as long as they are different as long as what you are multiplying they are different unit vectors then the answer is going to be a zero because when you have perpendicular lines when you have perpendicular vectors the dot product of two perpendicular vectors is in zero okay i'm going to write that down the dot product the dot product of any perpendicular n to perpendicular what? vectors is in zero are we together the dot product of any two perpendicular vectors is in zero okay please please don't forget that the dot product of any two vectors is in zero okay I hope you get that now let's move on and look at uh the parallel the ones okay let's look at in parallel uh vectors okay so i'm going to erase this part and also the conclusion that i've written down there now when we say parallel vectors okay in the case of parallel vectors we are going to have either they are going in the same direction like that okay so it means that they are all if they are they if if it's in the x-axis they are all in the x-axis okay like in the case of these unit vectors if they are in the y-axis then they should all be in the y-axis so that this can be i and this should also be i okay or they can be pointing in the opposite direction. This one is pointing in the opposite direction, so it's going to be negative i because it's pointing in the opposite direction, right? So, but what is the case here is that if they are pointing in the same direction, then the angle between them is equal to zero. If they are pointing in the opposite direction, then the angle between them is what? 180 degrees. That's what it means, okay? If they are pointing in the same direction, the angle between them is zero degrees. If it's in the opposite direction, then the angle between them is 80 degrees. Let's try to apply the dot product here. Okay, we have dot product there. Let me let me get my calculator. Okay. 
Okay, great. So what we have So what we have is remember a we are looking at a dot b equal to magnitude of a by magnitude of b then theta. Okay? Let's start with a situation when theta is equal to 0. Okay? When theta is equal to 0. So a dot b is going to be equal to, remember the magnitude of a, these are unit vectors. So let's say this is our a and this is our b. So we have vector a which is i and vector b which is equal to i. Okay? And then maybe we can call this one vector c. Okay? Now, we know that these are unit vectors, meaning their magnitude is 1. So we're going to have 1 multiplied by 1 plus cos 0. Okay? 1 multiplied by 1 cos what? Cos 0. Now, cos 0 is in a 1. Cos 0 is going to give you what? It's going to give you a 1. Okay? So this is going to now be 1 by 1 by 1. 1. If 180 degrees, cos 180 degrees is also going to give us the same thing. Cos 1, uh, cos 8, 180 degrees is also what? Negative 1 is negative 1, but the negative doesn't matter. Okay? What we're interested in is the magnitude. Okay? That's what we're interested in. So, the conclusion is that The conclusion is that when we have two different, I mean, when we have the same vectors, okay? If we have i being multiplied with i, the answer is going to be 1. If we have j being multiplied by j, the answer is 1. k multiplied by k, the answer is what? 1. Okay? So parallel... If the answer is 1, the dot product of parallel is what? 1. Okay? The, the dot product the dot product of any two parallel vectors is equal to 1. Okay, the dot product of any two parallel vectors is equal to what? One. Okay, the dot product of any two parallel vectors is equal to one. So we talked about perpendicular vectors and parallel vectors. Perpendicular vectors, the answer is the dot product is what? Zero. Then when we have parallel vectors, the dot product, the answer is what? One. Please, 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 please don't forget this. Okay. Don't get this. I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to rewrite this uh, here. What we're saying is that when we have I multiplied by J, which is equal to, let's say I, okay, which is equal to J by J. The answer is in, is what? Zero. Okay? Now, because it is associative, dot product associative, so it, this implies that J by I, we've just swapped them, is equal to K by I, which is equal to K by J. The answer is also equal to what? Zero. And i by i is equal to j by j which is equal to k by k equal to what equal to one okay now this is in the case of perpendicular in the case of perpendicular vectors Okay, and then this is in the case of parallel vectors. Okay.
So that is the conclusion that we have drawn now. Now let's let's look at something uh, very important. And the vector B is equal to Bx plus Bj plus B k. Okay. Then let's find the dot product, isn't it? We need to find the dot product. Okay. So if those are the vectors that we have, then what is going to be the dot product? Then A dot B is going to be equal to, we have to multiply this, AXI plus AYJ plus AZK dot bxi plus byj plus bzk okay now let's start uh, multiplying them one by one okay but what is going to happen is that this x is going to multiply with bx again multiply with by okay. to have ax by bx that is ax bx okay then i dot what i so we're going to have i dot i okay so you treat the ax y z bx by bz as in uh, as coefficients and then you treat sorry Okay, so we multiply the i by f in the in the other brackets there. Okay, so a x i by b x i is going to give us a x b x i dot i. Okay, then we get this a x and multiply with b y. We're going to have what? By by, we are going to have ax by. Then here we have i dot j. All right. So here there is i, here there is j. So that's why we have i dot what dot j. Then let's go ahead and multiply ax i by b dot k. So we're going to have ax b z i dot we're done with this the first one okay so let's move on to the next one to the second one so we're now going to start multiplying a y okay a y i'm going to start multiplying a y by uh, all those we are going to get we're going to have a y b x then is what dot i b x dot y Then next we have ay multiplied by by. Okay, ay multiplied by by. We are going to get. We're going to have. I'm going to continue there. Plus ay by j dot j. Okay, j dot j. Plus bz ay by bz. A Y B Z. Then here there is J dot K. Okay, J dot K. Then after that, so we are what with a with a 
AY, isn't it? We're done with AY. So we can now start multiplying the AZ with each of these. Okay? We can now multiply AY with each of those. So what are we going to have? AZ by BX. We're going to have what? AZ, BX, okay? K by rather dot dot i plus a by by we're going to have a z by k dot j okay step by step all right go step by step you start with a x go to a y then finally go to what a is it that's how we're going about it all right then from there we multiply az by bz so we're going to say plus k now this point that we have reached this point that we have reached here it's basically like we are we are expanding i'm sure we should all be familiar with expansion okay when, when you look at uh, uh, algebra of expansion, right? Or if that you do you what is called uh, binomial expansion, okay? All those things, they are coming into play here. Now, let's remember that we are just from concluding that if we are multiplying any perpendicular vectors, let's say I and J, which and K, which is the same, the same as the j and uh, k so as long as they are different then what we get is a zero and as long as they are same as long as they are same, what we get is a one okay if they are same as different the answer is what zero okay so let's look at where they are different okay so let's look at this part we can see that here they are different so what we're going to get is a zero right here they are different what we get is a zero here they are different what we get is a zero okay right there they're also different we get a zero they're different they're different here we get what then what you have look at this part here it's in uh they are the same i and i we're going to get a, a, a one here and j we're going to get a one here we have what k and k what we're going to get a one Okay. I'm trying to remove this thing that has come on my. Okay. So have we noticed that? So we've seen that all those that are having different unit vectors and I and K, J and I, uh, J and K, K and I, K and J those we can knock them out automatically they should be out because zero by anything is what is zero isn't it zero if you multiply zero by anything it's going to give you a zero and you don't have to waste your time on that okay so zero by this this is going to be out okay uh zero by this this is going to be out zero by that is going to be out zero by this is going to be out zero by that it's going to be out zero by this it's going to be all out give you any headache because zero by anything we know that it's what it's a zero okay so they're going to die a natural death so what do we have we've remiss one so here we have ax bx okay multiplied by one right one by anything this is one by, by anything is just that thing that you have okay. one by ax bx it's just ax bx so no need of even writing the one. Okay. Then here we have a one, like I have said, one by a y d y. We're going to have what? A arriving. Now this is the key with physics. I want you to get this. All right. This is the key with physics. Uh, uh, same with math. Anyway, the key with physics and math is that whenever you're in class like this and you derive certain formulas or equations, okay. Once you're out of class, the first thing that you need to do is to go through what you are doing. Okay. Try to derive those formulas on your own okay derive them go through what you are doing then close the book derive the formula on your own okay 
solve through the examples that you that you saw in class and then try to solve all others you're going to come across okay so you need to uh you need to 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 to, to be uh, 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 solvers of problems problem solvers okay whenever you find a problem in physics solve it whenever you find a problem in in, in math solve it chemistry solve it. all those that is what is going to make you good with these subjects that involve a lot of calculations otherwise like i've always mentioned if you're going to be lazy with solving questions deriving formulas deriving uh, equations and all if you're going to be lazy then math physics chemistry and whatever has to do with solving is not for you okay it is not obviously for you okay so let's look at an example so that we appreciate what uh, uh what we're talking about right teaching first i give things in general where we're using letters like that and all and then from that uh we can uh look at uh, a more specific uh, example now a cross product i mean is this dot product and uh, and 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 or rather scalar product you can find these things also in uh uh, uh, uh the, the, the college, college physics for science for scientists and engineers uh, by seal okay you can find i think those uh, it, it is quite well explained in that book but in uh, Shom's outline for college physics, you're not going to find questions on this, okay? So that is the guide. If you want to read further, you can read from the uh, from uh, uh, Stewart's college uh, college physics for scientists and engineers. Uh, I love particularly uh, um, uh, the sixth edition. I like it more. Uh, but the, but there's also I think the ninth edition, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but I love uh, sixth edition. Then, if you want questions, you're not going to find these questions, uh, questions on this uh, uh, sub-segment of, of the topic uh, in uh, Shom's outline for college physics, okay? So I will try to send you some questions that you can go through. So let's look at an example, okay? So we say, given that, given that A is equal to 3i, plus, let's say 2j, minus k, and, and what, b is equal to, let's say i, minus 4j, plus k, all right, plus k, find, find a the magnitude of a and magnitude of b so this is something that we've, uh, we've been doing for quite some time i'm sure no one at this time should be able, should struggle with finding the magnitude of a and b okay then b find a dot b and lastly the angle The angle theta between between the vector a and vector b okay so let's look at that right so it's a solution but a the magnitude of a is going to be equal to what certainly we don't have to waste time on this here we know that uh this is three squared plus 2 squared plus negative 1 squared okay which is going to be equal to 9 plus 4 plus 1 which is equal to what root of what 14 okay root of 14 we can end it there we can express it in decimals okay units of course because this is uh, vectors then the magnitude of b is going to be equal to the root of this is one squared plus negative four squared plus one squared which is equal to this is one plus 16 
plus 1, which is equal to root of 18 units. Okay, so at this point, I'm just leaving it at that, so that we don't have to have a lot of rounding of errors. Okay, then let's find A dot B, right? Let's find A dot B, okay? So I'm going to erase this part, the down part. Uh, I'll give you a chance to, uh, to copy that. So we move on, let's find A dot B, okay? Let's find A dot B. Now, my friends, you see, um, some of these things, they may be looking a bit complicated, especially uh, looking at all those letters we're writing, A X, A Y, A Z, whatever, all those. But once we're dealing with numbers, this is very, very simple, okay? This is very, 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 very simple, okay? And I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a shortcut of how to go about this. Okay, first I'll try to use the normal uh, no, the normal way of doing things. So we have a dot b, which is equal to remember our a is three i plus two j minus k. Then uh, dot i minus four j plus k. Right now. Here, remember, like we are doing, we have to multiply each of these with each of those, right? So let's start with 3i, okay? 3i by i, that is going to give us, the coefficient of i here is 1, okay? The coefficient of i there is 1. That's what we should know. The coefficient here is 1, the coefficient there is 1, even here the coefficient is 1, okay? So basically, you are multiplying the coefficients. So 3 by 1 is 3, and then we have i dot i, okay? Then 3 by negative 4, that is going to give us what? 3 by negative 4, that is negative 12, right? Negative 12, okay? And then what we have? i dot j, i dot j, okay? Then 3 by 1. 3 by 1 is 3, okay, then we have i dot k, 